people and the world and space. In order to make things more sustainable, Hello, everyone. This is the LCD on Elsa D online Astroscale launch event. This is a live stream of uh, the launch event. My name is Ishi Saeko Ishida. Uh, I will be acting as your MC today. Let me introduce you to today's participants. Astro Scales uh, Holdings, Mitsunobu Okada. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. Until today, we have been working a ton over the last 24 hours. Uh, there have been lots of things happening all across the world. Uh, and so I need to sit down and take a deep breath. I'm happy to be here. I can just only imagine. Well, all I have to do now is sit back and watch, uh, and so I am looking forward to the event. Astroscale General Manager, uh, Ms. Miki Ito. Uh, hello, everyone. Hi. Ito-san, you're a technical person, is that right? Yes. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to uh, listening to you talk to us about uh, the technical aspect. The launch itself will happen around uh, 1507, uh, but uh, until then, we'll talk about Astrocale, Astroscale, and uh, we'll talk about uh, today's mission. First, I have a few questions about Astroscale itself. Uh, Okada-san, uh, you started this company uh, yourself on 23rd, in 2013. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a midlife crisis uh, around uh, around the time I was about to turn 40? I was thinking about what I wanted to do in my 40s, and I learned about uh, the problem of safe debris and that no one had really tried to address this issue. And so oh, I started to think about doing this. I heard uh, that when you were uh, a child uh, that uh, you were uh, uh, very strongly em emphasized uh, by astronauts. Uh, yes, I went to uh, space camp uh, and um, I received a message from uh, the Japanese astronaut about uh, um, space being for the generations of the future. And uh, so that was your inspiration for starting this. Uh, and uh, so now you are here and you are about to see this actually come to fruition. Now, can I ask you a little bit about uh, the environment, the ambience uh, within the e, uh, company? E. Um, we are in uh, Kinshicho in Sumida Ward. Uh, it's a pretty downtown uh, part of uh, <laughs> Japan. Uh, we also have locations uh, in five countries, uh, Israel, Singapore, the UK, e, and uh, the US as well. And um, I think everyone in the uh, company has been involved in this uh, project, um, but everyone is very enthusiastic, uh, very gung-ho. Um. And are there lots of Japanese people who work at the company? Well, I think it's probably around 40% uh, something. Uh, so more than half of the people uh, are not Japanese. It's a very, we're a very global operation. So again, we will are planning on having uh, the launch itself uh, at 15:07 uh, uh, Japan time, but uh, we will all talk about safe sustainability and uh, the removal of uh, safe debris and the technology, and we have uh, a number of. Uh, um, 
requests uh, for or um, from people who want to uh, send uh, words of encouragement to, uh, to uh, uh, LCD. You can uh, write to us via Twitter uh, on UTAB. Uh, uh, you can uh, write to us on Twitter uh, with the hashtag uh, GoLCD. So, uh, to start with, we'll talk about space sustainability. We have a video for you first. Hello, everyone. Um, are you familiar with the word uh, space sustainability? It's a type of sustainability uh, that connects uh, people, the Earth, and uh, space. This is something, uh, a very important thing for our livelihoods. I would like to talk about a number of things that are really going to blow your mind. This is deep in the downtown uh, of Tokyo. This is Kinshicho. Here there is a very interesting company that's uh, trying to uh, deal with space sustainability. It's AstroScale, uh, who are space sweepers. Now, there are many artificial satellites uh, and space uh, and satellites uh, upper uh, stages uh, that are uh, continuing to float around in space uh, in low Earth orf orbit as debris. Right now, uh, there are uh, around 3,000 artificial uh, satellites, uh, and uh, there are around uh, 25,000 pieces of debris, and uh, they're all circulating around the Earth. So uh, they are traveling at a speed of seven to eight uh, kilometers per minute, uh, which means that uh, they can go uh, from Tokyo uh, to Osaka uh, in a very short time. And uh, this very small debris e e travels at a very fast speed. Uh, and if we leave this alone, we know that we will not be able to uh, uh, sustain the kind of things that we are doing right now. What's the point? So I don't see it every day. So why should I worry about something I can't see every day? Out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, right. But the fact is, we rely on this stuff constantly. Everything we do is reliant on satellite data. Like, how did you get here today? I used my GPS. You used your Google Maps, right? That's right. based on satellite data. And so the we've been launching satellites into space since 1957. Mm -hmm. Okay, a long time but we're not bringing the stuff down. Okay. And so we're becoming more and more reliant on satellite data, but we're not cleaning up after ourselves. So you're telling me that a little piece of space junk could take out the satellite that I rely on to get here. That's exactly it. I hear that the uh, the employees here have a different name for the company. They don't call it Astroscale. What do they call it? Space Sweepers. Space Sweepers, okay. That was what was on the shutter out there. Okay. Space sweeper, so we two are hot the top. That's it. Cool. <laughs> so we want to clean up that orbital highway. We always say that the the orbit is just another uh, another natural resource. Mm -hmm. So just like uh, there's uh, forests and rivers and oceans here, the orbit is just another natural resource. And sure. if we don't protect it, if we don't sweep it, if we don't clean it, there's going to be problems. That's the sustainability. That's it. We're an environmental company. Talking about AstroScale, they will be performing uh, a test in March of this year, going out into space and actually collecting space debris. LCD is the name of the satellite that will be collecting uh, the debris. This is this is a mock-up of the servicer and the client. Uh, the servicer uh, collects or captures uh, the debris. And uh, the client uh, is a dummy of a debris. It's actually not a real dummy, but it's alive. Uh, but uh, we are having it uh, act as a standard for our debris. So this is the junk, the debris, and the uh, vacuum cleaner. I'm sorry, you missed a piece of junk. So today, I am looking at the facility. It's very sensitive, so you can see 
that I am all geared up uh, for a clean room. That's because this is a satellite uh, and they're very fussy about who gets to come in. So what captures uh, the space debris or it's much more difficult uh, to capture space uh, debris than it is to catch a bullet uh, because it travels at a very fast speed and also because it tumbles, it re rotates and revolves. And uh, so the relative speed uh, needs to be brought uh, close to zero in order to capture it. So this is uh, uh, a tremendous amount of technology that's built into this. So LCD will capture uh, the debris and then uh, enter into the atmosphere uh, and will burn up uh, in the atmosphere. Yes. It is, in other words, uh, an incinerator. Oh, the atmosphere is an incinerator for space debris. It's a little sad to think that LCD is going to burn up as well, but this is for humanity. And burning up uh, for the sake of uh, humanity is kind of cool if you think about it. Over the next 10 years, we know that there's going to be a lot of launches. There will be 46,000 about artificial satellites that will be launched over the next 10 years. So that's more than there are in space right now. On top of that, um, there, are, there are around six astronauts uh, at the ISS, but, uh, but uh, around 2030, 2040, there'll be many more, some people say around 1,000, 2,000 people. So we need to make safe a safe space, a safe environment, sustainable use. Uh, doesn't mean uh, that we want to stop development and stop launches. It means that if we're going to launch uh, satellites into space, we need to have a system in place where the debris can be picked up uh, and uh, brought back. Now, uh, you might think that it should be fairly simple, but we know uh, that it's very complicated and also can be dangerous. But it's also an incredibly cool thing to do and really very moving. Space debris is not only to be collected, it collects us uh, and our livelihoods. It's the work for heroes. It's the work of people who are protecting us. So let us all uh, send words of encouragement uh, to the space sweepers. Pak uh, uh, reported on Space Sustainability Special or Reporter. So now let's talk a little bit more or with uh, uh, Pak about Space Sustainability. <laughs> Thank you very much. So with that uh, said, um, I would like to have us uh, talk about uh, various uh, different topics. Uh, what's the impact of st space debris on our day-to-day -day lives? To uh, Okada-san, uh, the Space Sustainability Project. Why did you start this uh, at asterisk scale? Um, well, for the, we talk about uh, SDGs. This is uh, for the uh, 17 items. But in order to have uh, space sustainability, we cannot do those 17. So, at, at this point, it's, 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 it's really danger zone. So we have to, we really have to do right now. It's, uh, it's so much urgency. So this is really serious issue. 
isn't it? Yes, a few days ago, there was a big explosion and it made it the hundreds of pieces and that is uh, incredible. And then uh, that, those are very dangerous things. So what was that collision about? Is the U.S. Uh, large size of a satellite? I'm, I'm not blaming you, American people, but uh, that caused the collision. Uh, it could be the, started from a tiny, tiny um, debris. So a lot of stuff is still unknown, and then there's uh, lots of collisions uh, going on. Exactly. That's why, especially the large size of uh, debris, we have to remove from the space. Otherwise, no place to, to sh uh, launch the satellite. So, so from now on, it's going to be a 46,000 uh, satellite will be launched. So is it like a relaunching problem, a uh, launching plant? Yes, they try before, but maybe about 40% were successful, but the rest of it became just the space debris. So, so there are people, we, we, like, people like us are needed to clean up a space. Well, definitely uh, sweep, uh, spa uh, space sweepers. So clean up a space, right? It looks cool. And, and also in the black uh, attire, it's really um, impressionable. So, Pekun, so it's been two months. You are, um, became uh, the special supporter for space sustainability. Well, I was always concerned about that. But now I have a more higher awareness and in the last couple months, I really uh, tuned to the, uh, the space-related things. Uh, one of them is the Mars uh, the project. It involved the U.S. and China in the last couple months. So, so before, we were just, I, I, I just thought, oh, that's uh, exciting. But now... I hear, oh my goodness, those uh, upper part of a rocket will be a space debris. So we really have to be aware of that issue. We have to be concerned. So for my ch children and my grandchildren, they're going to look up the sky. And I, I, I really hope them to have a nice, uh, peaceful uh, life in the next, uh, for the next generation. So every day will be uh, more filled with uh, the happiness. So that's why I, my, my mind, mindset, and my awareness changed. I, I actually was called uh, I am, uh, go, go me, like a space junk talent or a comedian. But, well, it's, uh, it's, but seriously, I'm really into the space and sustainability issue. Well, thank you so much. So just the two months, your, your mindset and your awareness really changed, right? So those are space sustainability really connects to our daily lives. Uh, Mr. Okada, could you tell us in more specific? Well, the satellites as a big, um, give us a big benefit for us. For example, it will help to catch the, the natural disaster in advance and also a GPS you mentioned earlier. And that's also because of the satellite and internet and, and a safe, uh, safety and a security as well. So if we cannot use a satellite data, I, I cannot even imagine what what kind of world it's going to be. That's why we have to keep the world, uh, the space. Before I came here, I used a Google map. That also, without a satellite, I cannot use, right? So those artificial satellites, it's really, really give us a big benefit. And how about, how about Ms. Ito? Can you elaborate for us? Well, Mr. Okada already mentioned uh, most of them, but with the GPS, everybody's using a GPS app, but also the, um, 
uh, the shipping and also, also the aircraft, they are also using the GPS data for tracking and the trajectory tracking. And also the, the, the scientific lab, they use that. So something we, it, it's going to be a, a totally uh, brand new uh, a research and the development. So, so a lot of stuff actually gave us a feedback and then reflected on our daily lives. So for example, the aircraft and then um, uh, the shipping we can locate with the GPS and also that will, for the agricultural uh, things. Exactly, because uh, with a satellite picture, could take a big, huge uh, land. So sometimes, it, because of the, the, the size of the land, sometimes they miss uh, the time, right time to the harvest. So with the GPS um, data, you can, uh, the, those agricultural people can use that. They are also benefited it. So without the artificial satellite, our lives will be totally different. And also uh, the satellite data is used for the ex stock exchange and financial area. So that also support the everyday life as well as uh, the financial industry. So it's, it's just so unbelievable. We cannot just imagine without a satellite. So about the launch. So those L Elsa D will be equipped to the Soyuz rocket. So are the satellite also attached to the rocket? Well, rocket usually has a one single satellite, and in our case, S Elsa D. Actually, eighteen national T. Um, the rocket will combine in a one, one launched, and so 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 many that many countries are involved for this project because it's it's actually we uh, the breakdown and the split the, the cost um, depends on how much they have to put in on a rocket launching. So we split by the, the weight. So that's why we try to keep it even one gram uh, lighter. So, so that's, uh, uh, so we, we have to be uh, equal. So after launch, is it automatically that will be a flying run in, in the orbit or it have to be uh, controlled? Well, after satellite launched, there'll be uh, tumbling and then rotating around the Earth. So ground segment, the ground control, we have to monitor all the time and then uh, it's it's called a ground uh, mission ground control center, and we've been monitoring and then controlling and then always understanding what it is going on. So it's called a trabona. It's a big like a dish. Sometimes um, some people have a CS dish or a BS dish, right? It's 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 a huge size of that. So we always see the satellite, the locate location. We monitor the location of the satellite, and then we'll keep a communication and put on the data on it, and we control uh, the satellite. It's like an airplane's uh, control center, what they do to control the aircraft. They also, we can send a command from the ground uh, control center. So ISS, there's a uh, the manned uh, satellite, but artificial satellite, there, there's unmanned, right? There's no human in it. So how can they respond? Well, actually from the ground, it's hard, uh, it cannot see. We only
only rely on the, the data as a figure, the numbers. Is it using AI or the personal resource or deployed 24 seven? Well, LSAD has a certain feature, but before uh, it used to be a 24 seven, there's a somebody is monitoring, but as for the LSAD, it's um, autonomously, it can monitor the satellite. It's very, very smart. I'm, I'm impressed. Uh, Ito, Ito-san, uh, the, way, the way she spoke and explained. So, so ultimately, it's ideal just to push one button and then done. But, but this time, it's uh, for each, uh, each stage, uh, there's a, the hum, hum, human resources will make sure that, that everything is, is done correctly. So as for the space, uh, this, is, this is a world first time um, space debris uh, removal demonstration, right? So maybe partially the AI, but with AI and then the human, but still there's no assurance, no, no assurance to be successful. But so, so I'm really, really excited about this launch. So we, we're receiving a lot of uh, comments from viewers. And then somebody said, that, oh, I'm very close to the, the uh, Astro Scales uh, headquarter. I wish I could work there. Well, we talked about earlier, so the ground antenna, but we use uh, 16 locations. With, so all the Arctic and Antarctic. So we, we've been using those 16 locations of antenna. So that's also the big advancement, I believe. That's right, it's a quite advancement. So we are talking about space debris. So my background, the, the see the lots of uh, space debris. So if we don't do anything about it, it's going to be like this. Well, well, this is uh, this is an image, right? We, we cannot see like this as a stationary um, a, a view. It's a uh, ten times faster than bullet. They are moving so fast. And if it's a more than one millimeter, it will be like a hundred medium parts. So it's hard to see the 2D, but it's, it, 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 it's going to be that uh, incredible number. Uh, I was very, very um, scared when I heard one explosion and then all the, all the fragmentation of the space debris will be another cause of another uh, com collision. So it's going to be like a chain reaction. So it, it's going to be uh, like a domino effect. And so before that kind of thing has happened, we have to do, uh, we have to remove large size of uh, debris. So we, we really cannot uh, waste any minute any second. So AstroScale uh, developed and then and they have been doing uh, so many things. Could you tell us, Mr. Okada? So, so we, we had uh, lots of people. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Does that mean you are going to stop talking here? I forgot why I had that uh, alarm on. I'm sorry. Uh, 
So I started thinking about uh, uh, the technical aspect of removing debris, and we also have to make this a business. To, so we have to uh, have a value proposition to our customers. Uh, also, uh, there aren't any real, real rules around this. Uh, we can't stand and start yelling into the void uh, about rules. And so uh, these three things have to move in tandem with each other. LCD is something that, um, and I hate to toot my own horn, but a lot of people uh, are focused on what we're doing because we're doing all three of these things uh, at the same time. And uh, so uh, the fact that we can do all these things with um, LCD is uh, great for us. Um, well, um, so you're kind of the trip, uh, the Jap uh, of uh, um, space. Well, that would be AAA in the States. Uh, and uh, we need to make sure that people are not breaking down and leaving junk on the side of the road, on, on the side, uh, in orbit, space orbit. Uh, and uh, so oh, we would like to be the world's uh, leader uh, at uh, removing space uh, debris. So moving on, um, We'll talk to uh, Okada-san back uh, at the launch. Uh, and uh, pak uh, do you have anything that you would like to say? Well, this is something that I've been thinking about uh, um, for a while now. This is one of the things that if you start thinking about it, there's more and more stuff you want to uh, uh, de delve into. I think that there's a tremendous amount uh, of work that went into everything uh, and a lot of really hard decisions uh, that had to be made. Um, I, th I think that there might have been uh, a lot of things that if you thought about it, you might might have really wanted to uh, walk away. We have about another 34 minutes until the launch itself. So oh, I hope that all of you are sending cheering messages and we believe uh, that uh, we will be able to uh, create a new era of space development to achieve a, a, a sustainable space environment. <laughs> And I was going to try to say that again, but um, I think that uh, we are working to try to create a sustainable space environment. I can't even say this in English. Okada-san, Pakun-san, thank you very much. We'll see you again later on. So with that said, we will talk about uh, the technology around uh, LCD's uh, space debris removal technology. We will be talking to uh, Chris Brackaby, the CEO, uh, as well as uh, Miki Ito. I'm looking at uh, the various comments that we're receiving from you. Uh, and uh, people are waiting with bated, bra bated breath. Um, there's lots of uh, messages uh, cheering you on. COO, uh, Mr. Chris Brackaby, he is here with us. Uh, thank you very much. So, Chris, can you tell me about what you're feeling uh, right now? Uh, yes, we've got 30 minutes, so I'm really excited. So, uh, Ito san, uh, I'd like to ask you a few questions uh, about uh, LCD itself. What kind of a satellite is it? Are we ready? I think you'll start to see a, a video uh, or a visual, excuse me. This is LCD, uh, what we've developed. 
We are trying to uh, remove actual uh, debris in space, and uh, this is, uh, the, if we are successful, this will be the first time that this has been done in the world. Uh, we have a servicer, which is the debris collector, uh, and the client, which is actually a mock-up of uh, debris. And uh, this will be launched into space, and once it's in orbit, um, then uh, we will uh, do a series of experiments uh, where we will release uh, the mock-up debris and attach it, collect it. Uh, so uh, it is fairly mechanical, uh, and uh, the service uh, uses uh, magnets to capture uh, the debris. And so uh, this is a very important aspect of the technology that we have at uh, uh, Astro scale uh, because with uh, a, a if there's a metal plate uh, on the side of the debris or the a satellite as it is uh, placed into orbit, uh, then as long as we have a strong magnet, we will be able to attach, release, attach a release. Uh, and that is a very important part of our technology. Another important thing is rendezvous proximity operation uh, technology. Uh, and what we have here is a schematic that shows you how the uh, debris is identified, uh, found, uh, and uh, how uh, we uh, launch the servicer. And uh, we use GPS data uh, to uh, uh, get the servicer closer to the uh, debris. Uh, and we use the uh, satellite sensors to uh, get closer to uh, the debris. And so the satellite gets closer and closer to the uh, debris, but we also have to be careful that it doesn't collide with the debris itself. Uh, so uh, we use technology here, there. Uh, there are many parameters. Uh, we do thousands, tens of thousands of simulations, and we have uh, found a way in which uh, we can run calculations uh, that uh, prevent uh, collisions with the debris. We also have to uh, um, analyze uh, the various um, rotations and the tumbling uh, of the uh, debris itself. And uh, so we need to be sure or that the attachment uh, is uh, oriented in the right position so that it can uh, properly attach with the um, debris. And once it has been attached, uh, the e satellite will uh, take the debris with, us, with it uh, to uh, the atmosphere and it will burn up uh, once it enters Earth's atmospheres. Uh, we are planning on doing three e experiments and they will be e progressively e more or difficult. The first is to gently release uh, the mock debris. And then to cl get closer, uh, and the servicer uh, will release the uh, magnet uh, to capture the debris. The second is more difficult. Uh, the uh, debris is uh, rotated or it tumbles as it is uh, released. And uh, because of that, uh, the position of the debris will change. So the servicer needs to analyze uh, where the debris is, how fast it is tumbling, rotating in space. Uh, and once that has been identified, uh, then the servicer uh, can position itself so that it is facing face to face uh, with the uh, debris so that it can attach like so. And once this has been a success, uh, then the third uh, experiment uh, is even more difficult. Uh, the servicer actually loses sight of the uh, mock debris. Uh, and once that happens, uh, then uh, we uh, the servicer uh, uh, moves in an ellipse like this to identify uh, where the uh, 
debris is uh, and uh, identifies the correct location and orientation before attaching. And once it has done that, it can reorient itself and enter into Earth's atmosphere air like so. And in this way, will burn up once it enters the Earth's atmosphere. So this is basically a walkthrough of the LCD mission that uh, we will do this time. It's a little sad to think that it's going to burn up and it won't be coming back. If you think about all that it's doing, we'd really wanted to uh, like to see it come safely back to Earth, but uh, it's collecting debris and it need that debris needs to be eliminated. So uh, it burns up in space, in the atmosphere. So, and so you've done simulations, thousands, tens of thousands of simulations uh, so that you can get the right orbit, uh, the right dimensions, the right orientation. And thank you for or very much for that very easy to understand explanation. So we'll move on to the next visual. I'll talk about three technologies about this uh, mission. The first uh, is uh, uh, non-communication with uh, the target um, debris. For instance, uh, think about uh, an astronaut docking with uh, the International Space Station. But in this case, um, both sides can communicate with each other to uh, ensure that the docking is done correctly. But debris is not operative, uh, so it can't communicate with you and you can't talk to it and say, move this way, move that way. So LCD cannot receive any signals from uh, the debris, but it still has to go out and collect it. So. One of the things that uh, we uh, talk about, uh, that's spoken about uh, when the uh, sat satellites or, or the, air, the spacecraft craft dock uh, with the uh, International Space Station, they, uh, we hear about the, that being done at extremely high speeds. Uh, uh, but again, as you've mentioned, that's done uh, by, with both sides communicating with each other. But in this case, there is no communication. Though that, so that's an order of magnitude more difficult. So uh, the second technology, uh, having to capture something that is tumbling in space, uh, the satellites uh, that you think about uh, are oriented uh, and controlled and oriented so that they can communicate with Earth. Uh, but debris is not um, oriented in a particular di uh, direction. Uh, so LCD has to get close enough and at the same time be able to uh, uh, figure out uh, which way the debris is moving. So it's a very delicate dance that uh, LCD has to do with the debris in order for it to get close enough to capture uh, the e debris. So this is a very challenging thing uh, to try to do uh, because it's done at extremely high speeds. The third uh, technological uh, highlight is autonomous flight uh, uh, with uh, intermittent, uh, only intermittent uh, communication. Um, data uh, uh, and commands are sent uh, from Earth stations uh, and the control station uh, to LCD. But we have uh, only a certain number of locations uh, where the Earth stations can be located. And so uh, um, because of that, uh, there is not uh, uninterrupted uh, continuous communication between uh, Earth and uh, the uh, LCD. So uh, this is uh, something that also uh, makes things uh, very different uh, as well. So looking at this, but 
for their satellite and not so much the magnet magnetism used, right? That's right. Uh, that's why our development technology, uh, could you see the, some uh, round uh, plate? This is called a docking plate. This is a uh, half of magnetic. And, and then there are uh, lots of 10,000 of uh, uh, the satellites will be launched. So that will be it, uh, captured, caught later. So which means no more uh, the new additional uh, sp uh, space debris. So that was the LCDs, um, how they remove the space uh, debris. So we're going to hear from the engineer and the project manager, Mr. Izuka from Baikonur Space uh, uh, Port in Kazakhstan. Hello, my name is uh, project manager Izuka K. Here, where I am is uh, in a Baikonur um, a spaceport in Kazakhstan. This is, as you can see, it's like a, a desert. It's um, at the March 20th. It's, it looks sunny, but I actually, it's your lower and uh, minus neg negative 10 degrees. And for the, so the S uh, Elsa D, actually the March 20, it's going to be launched. I'm also personally really, really excited about it. And there are eight engineers are here. We came here uh, early February, and then we worked on the lots of uh, preparation stuff. And so far, there's no big issue, and then we could follow the schedule. So we're, our group are really happy about it. Of course, we had a, we overcome, overcame uh, so many problems, but because of your big support, we could, we could have today. So Elsa D is uh, just the beginning. Actually, once it's D is an orbit, and uh, they're going to be uh, doing a good, big job, and then doing a lot of a mission, including um, experiment and then demonstration. So, so mainly the, with the uh, Astroscale UK office, and then uh, we cooperated with uh, other engineers, and then we we worked so hard. I and mean, of course, there are certain unforeseeable things may happen, but uh, the engineer from Japan, Israel, and UK, and and from four areas. So we are all co uh, working together and then make this mission successful. So I really appreciate the further your big support. Thank you. So. Baikonur is, you can see only uh, sky and land, it's such a big area. So speaking of the operation of the launch, uh, JK load, uh, the service, how did you find it? Uh, JK live stream, how, how did you um, come, uh, come to this? Well, JK, oh. So we need to find something that can get us to space for a good price, and uh, can do it reliably. So, so they are lower cost and also the stable safety. I mean, sometimes uh, even astronaut will be brought, right? Now, well, you're going to be sh showing all the comments from the uh, sent by Twitter, uh, the lower part of the screen, hashtag LCD force. And also, uh, we, are, we are checking your comment uh, you received on this YouTube. So, after the LCD launch, 
uh, speaking of the operation after that, how how you plan to operate? で、私たちは so please watch. Debris from one collision spreads out. creating a whole environment of different skills. We have to master a lot of new technology. This facility allows any organization in the UK to come and operate their satellites, specifically focusing on in-orbit servicing of satellites. For Astroscale's mission, we need to do two things. Keep the amount of debris that we're adding into space to a minimum. And secondly, if we can, we want to bring down some of the big pieces of debris that are already up there. It's not just about cold science, but it's about the creative approach. It has this extra dimension that people love. Something completely new for the UK Space Agency. Here in the UK, we're running the ground segment and operations. So this is how we control the spacecraft in orbit and monitor its health. Because we're doing close proximity operations and capture, we need the onboard software to react in real time and control a lot of things happening at once. We need long periods of time of contact with the satellites. We need 16 ground stations covering almost the entire globe. These are the antennas that we're using to send telecommands to the spacecraft. We're supported by the team at Astroscale Japan, who are all the subsystem engineers. It's very exciting to be part of this team. We share experience, technical level, at business level, at policy level. Well, that's all part of the joy of working for an international company like Astroscale. It's important that we get involved in this in the UK because the control and the operational capability for spaceflight going forward is something that's vital to have in this country. That's the excitement, you know, we're doing something really important. You know, I have grandchildren, it's going to make a difference to them. I think space sustainability is essential to any future space exploration. The more operations we can run from the UK, the more we can demonstrate this country's ability to really contribute internationally to some of the most vital missions that are coming up in the space industry. Well, it's almost like a film movie for the mission achieved, uh, accomplished. So this is uh, just uh, this center is dedicated to this.
ットオフィスですね、UK のオフィスなんですけど、1人の社員でスタートしました。現在150人の社員がいます。うち10人から15人がですね人工衛星の運用に特化したスタッフになります。ですので、私たち、まずはですねイギリスの政府と、そしてサテライトアプリケーションカタプルトという団体とですね共同してこちらの施設をですね施設を設立しましたそしてですね軌道上サービスに特化した施設ということでとてもユニークな施設ですただただですね軌道上のサービスに特化した施設というのは世界初ですですのでこれからですねランデブーと金剛遊運用ですねを行っていきますですので私たちにとっても本当にですねワクワクする状態なんですね。ですので日本でまず人工衛星を製造してそして地上局そして運用部隊はイギリスにいますそして打ち上げ自体はカザフスタンで行われているとそして地上局は世界中にですね16箇所あってですね私たちの人工衛星を監視して通信することになりますということで本当にですね、国際的なミッションと言えます。大体約11分後にですね打ち上げがされる予定なんですけれども、えー、打ち上げましたらですね UK のチームがですね監視をスタートする形になります。そしてもちろんですね日本にも運用に関わっている部隊がいます。ですのでですね私たちにとってもグローバルなまあとにかくですねワクワクするミッションです。ということで以上がですね UK の運用部隊の。Thank you very much for the explanation. So Japan, Russia, England, UK, so so worldwide、uh, effort. That was a great、uh, mission. So, any、uh, last message? でこれはですね、本当に素晴らしいミッションです。岡田から、そしてパックンからですね、スペースサステミレティネビリティの話がありました。私たちはですね、このですね国際的なチームでですね、このグローバルの問題を解決しようとしています。皆さんの力が必要です。この問題がどんなに重大な問題なのかというのをですね、ぜひ皆さん、いろいろな方と話してください。そして GoLSD と応援の言葉をいただければと思います。Go Elsa D. So thank you very much.、Uh, uh, Chris San talked about、uh, UK's mission control center. Now, so there's some news from、uh, Elsa D launch. Actually, the time. Of the launch is changed. So please wait for the detail. Elsa, the timing of launch is, has been changed. Please wait for the detail.
はい、えー、ここで、えー、岡田さんからお知らせですお願いいたしますはいえー、っとたった今ロシアとずっと喋ってたんですけども打ち上げがですね24時間延期になりましたで、えー、技術的な詳細はまだ伺ってないんですけれども、まあ、技術的な理由によってですね明日に延期になったということです、えー、極めて残念今打ち上げの瞬間を一緒に見守り,守りたかったんですけれども残念なんですがえただですねこれは悪くはないことですやっぱりロケットっていうのは打ち上げる直前までいろんなことを確認してるんですねそれで何かがあったんでしょうでそれでえー、何かを発見して確認のために時間を取るというのは極めて大事なことなので、うんはいあのはい、もう一度仕切り直しということですね。そうですね、はいいやあの野口宇宙飛行士の打ち上げもね何度も延期になって、ねはい、もう確認、はい、確認を重ねて、はい、えまたあの新たに仕切り直して打ち上がるということですよね。でも一ヶ月後じゃない、はい、明日だって言ってます。ですからね。<笑>はいありがとうございます。えー、そして皆様からの応援メッセージたくさんいただきましたありがとうございます。えー、こちらでご紹介してよろしいでしょうか。はい、応援メッセージをいただいちゃいましょう。ね、いただきましょう。はい、まずはですね、えー、こちらをご覧ください。ジャクサ研究開発部門の山本です。アストロスケールさんとエルサ D に関する共同研究を実施してきました。この共同研究を通じて、アストロスケールさんがさまざまな試験をですね、ジャクサの設備で、調布やつくばの設備で実施されて、エルサ D の打ち上げに向けて着々と準備をされてきたことを拝見してきました。えー、より良いサステナブルな宇宙環境の実現へ向けて、えー、打ち上げが良い結果となることを心より、えー、祈っています。はい、えー。ジャクサの山本さんからいただきました。ありがたいですね。あのー、実はエルサディの試験ってジャクサの施設をものすごく使わせていただいたんですね。で加えてまあもう本当山本さんとあとジャクサの皆様にはもう。たくさん教えていただいてまして、はい、もうちょっとなんかこんなその上にこんな応援メッセージいただくなんてもちょっとあの感無量でございます。本当本当にありがとうございます。はい、ありがとうございます。伊藤さんのなんか、えー、あいいですか。<笑>本当にジャクサさんが、はい、あの何回も足を運ばさお邪魔させていただいていて、ね、本当にメルサディはあの多分ジャクサさんがいらっしゃらなかったらちょっとここまで来れなかったんじゃないかなと思いますので、本当に感の大変感謝しております。メッセージもいただいてありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。では続いてはこちらの応援メッセージです。今度こそ宇宙へゴーエルサディ。<笑>えー、こちらはですね、OSG 株式会社さんからいただいたメッセージですけれども、負けてきますね。負けてくる、ね。あのー<笑>はい、まあちょっとこれ話すと長いので。ええただ我々が初めて打ち上げようとしたイデア、うん、OSG1 という衛星があるんですけれども、うん、打ち上げが失敗に終わりまして、はい、今ちょうど横にあったんですけれども我々は衛星を失ったんですねなので、まあ、そのなんかリベンジの思いも込めて我々の今回のミッションバッジにはあの衛星の形が入っているし、うん、あの衛,星が衛星の中に刻印されているんですけれども、うんまあ、その OSG の皆様から熱いメッセージだったらちょっとね、うん、あのもうやってやらなきゃって思いますねこれは。うん<笑>伊藤さんも深く関わっていらっしゃるんですか。そうなんです。前の衛星もやっぱりその残念な場面にも立ち会ってますし、えー、あの S.G. さんにも非常にあの嬉しい報告ができなくて、えー、本当苦しかったんですけれども、まあぜひ今度こそ。そうですね,ですね、はい。はい、ありがとうございます。続いてはこちらの応援メッセージです。こんにちは。私たちは伊藤市立上美豊市第二中学校の生徒です。私たちは SDGs の探究学習でアストロスケールさんにお世話になりました今回お世話になったアストロスケールさんの衛星エルサー D が打ち上げられるのに感謝の気持ちを込めて応援メッセージを送りたいと思いますせーのエルサー D 頑張れ<笑><笑>えー、SDGs の体験学習とおっしゃってましたが、何か講演されたんですか？いや私してないんですよ講演。伊藤さんやったんですか？いや私も違います。あじゃあ社員の方がされたんですかね,ですね、はい。なんで私じゃないのかなって今。じ、え、ゃ、ー、<笑><笑>次回。<笑>次回伺わなきゃですね。<笑>中学生ですか。もう、えー、自分の中学時代を考えるともう恥ずかしくてしょうがないですね。いや,いや,いや素晴らしい本当にありがたい話です。あの、えー、先ほどねあの岡田さんがモーリーさんの影響を受けたっておっしゃいましたがもしかするとそういった SDGs の体験学習が
、えー、こう宇宙への夢に続くつながるかもしれませんよね。うん、いや本当にそうですね。ねありがとうございます。はい、えー、たくさんいただいています。えー、そしてこちらもご紹介しておきましょう。えー、続いてはツイッターなどでいただいた応援メッセージです。福岡市科学館さんからいただきました3年前に講演会で聞いた宇宙デブリの掃除屋さんついに打ち上げ応援しています福岡市科学館さんはツイッターで動画のメッセージもお送りいただいていますありがとうございます、えー、ありがとうございます講演会に行かれたんですかいやあの福岡市の科学館って、えーはい、むちゃくちゃ立派なんですよもう楽しいしあの、うん、本当にレベルが違うぐらい楽しいんですけども、はい、そこで公演あの多分開館記念とかだったと思うんですね。公、え、演、ー、あの公演させていただきました。とても楽しかったと思ってます。すね、ありがとうございます。いや三年前にということですけれども、よほどこう心に残ってずっと応援されてたんだと思いますよ。ですね、ありがとうございます。覚えていただきまして、えー、はい、ありがとうございます。えー、そしてこちらもご紹介いたしましょう。千葉県の中学一年生からいただきました。エルサディ。それから携わってこられたすべての方々へ土曜日素晴らしい未来が開けますエルサディの打ち上げですこの試みで人間が作り出してしまった負の遺産であるデブリを早くなくすことができるように願っています宇宙開発はこれからの私たちが生活するすべての基盤を担うと感じていますこれはまだこれはまだ第一歩に過ぎないとは思いますが皆さんの努力は世界に大きな希望を与えてくれると思いますおめでとうございます何もないところから一から作り上げていったことに感銘を受けましたこの挑戦が成功することを祈っていますということです素晴らしいメッセージですねいやもうあのいろんな方のサポートをいただいてここまで来てます、うん、おちおちおちの社員家族、えー、宇宙機関各国政府メディアそれから投資家ですね、うんうんうん、それからパーキスキーあのサプライヤーの方々とか、まあ、その他もろもろでそれでも、まあ、こういったまだお会いもしてない方々からの応援も届いてます本当にそれで私たちがこんな長く時間かかる道のりを歩けていけるのもその方々のおかげなので本当に感謝ですありがとうございます。ありがとうございます。はい。えー、もう一つご紹介いたしましょうか。はい。はい。今ですね、こちらで、えー、クリスさんにもお戻りいただきました。はい。クリスさん、たくさんの応援メッセージ来ていますけれども、いかがですか。Yeah, for those who are watching internationally, I think we don't didn't have a translation, but the update was the launch was cancelled for today and delayed for 24 hours. So we don't have a lot of information yet, but we'll work on that. And、uh, hope to be back here,、uh, back with the launch、uh, tomorrow. These delays happen. It's,、uh, it's a good thing we found any issue now and not later. And、uh, we expect to be moving again tomorrow. So thank you to all of the international audience who joined this today.、Uh, again, it's great to have your support. And、uh, we're looking forward to launch soon. うん、ありがとうございます。まあ、24時間延期になりましたが、もうこれだけ多くのサポートありがとうございますということですね。はい、岡田さんいかがですか？いやいかがですか？何もですね。あの24時間延期ということは、うんうん、明日は3月21日ですから、はい、3、2、1、5って感じでした。こ<笑><笑><笑>ういうことですね。<笑>まさにいやいやまさにあやいやいやいやいやいにいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいやいはい、ただの時刻は変わらないと思います。時刻は変わらない,らないということはおそらく15時7分頃の。ええ、あの今なんか言ってマットで違ってたら申し訳ない。そうですね。<笑>はい。いやまあ詳細が分かり次第またお伝えいたしますので、はい、はい、お待ちください。ということで、まあ、打ち上げは明日になったんですけれども、この番組はそろそろ終了そうさせていただきたいと思います。はい。えー、最後に伊藤さんいかがでしょうか。はい。あのー。
まあ、多くの人の助けを借りて、ええ、ようやくここまで来ました打ち上げは明日になりましたけれども、うん、あのようやく打ち上げを迎えることができて非常に感無量ですあのこれまでにあのご支援くださった方々本当にありがとうございましたいや明日の打ち上げあの見守りたいと思います引き続きよろしくお願いいたしますはいありがとうございますでは最後にはいでは最後に岡田さんはいえっとありがとうございますあの本当はですね今から打ち上げを見てここからめちゃくちゃロケットの解説しようと思ってたんですけど、うんうん、<笑>ちょっとできなくなっちゃいました。まあちょっとしょうがないです。でも明日のあの打ち上げをまた見守っていただければと思います。ありがとうございました。はい、ありがとうございます。はい、さあ皆さんね明日の打ち上げ楽しみに待っていてください。ゴーエルサ D ですね。はい、ゴーエルサ D <笑>、えー。最後はこちらの映像をご覧いただいてお別れです。ではまた明日。淡い非現実的な期待からスペースアセビリティを現実的で確かな希望へと変えてきたことを宣言します。Go SD.